Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's Mark here. Sorry for uh, the lack of videos, vacations and whatnot have uh, taken a, a big time suck out of my life, um, in a good way, but uh, I'm back and I wanted to get started, got some lights, so we should have a clear, better picture uh, now, which is nice. Um, but I wanted to talk today really quickly and do a short video about triads in the sense of knowing your place sonically within the band. <clears throat> so a lot of people uh, ask me a lot about, you know, understanding and, and filtering out, um, you know, where, where, where you should be playing on the neck, what parts you should be playing, um, especially people that are playing in cover bands and all that. You know, you, sh you have to understand the kind of sonic space based on the instrumentation within your group. Uh, this has come to the forefront of my mind because we just, I've been in a power trio for like a decade, but I just added a keyboard player into my band, which I'm loving. Um, but it's also helping me kind of wrap my head around where I should be playing, the different parts I should be playing. So if I'm playing in standard tuning, which is this guitar, or if I'm playing in my open C guitar, um, what voicings I should be using. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about very simplistic ways to approach this um, just within about 10 minutes and give you some ideas the things that I wish people would have kind of talked to me more about when I was a young player getting started and playing in bands. So uh, we've, and I, I've preached this a bunch, but um, the simple triad shapes that we have this, um, you know, being triads being three notes, right? So let's talk a little bit about in the context of a groove. So if we're playing, if we're sitting on like, like a static groove like that, so let's just bring it down here in G major. frequency-wise. So as guitar players, we're kind of in this mid to upper frequency level. With a bass player and with a keyboard player, it's maybe not super necessary for me to have that low G in there. So I might either play this voicing, which is these three notes, so G, B, D, which is your root inversion, or your root triad, I should say. Cutting through the mix within a context of drums, bass, you know, keyboards, whether that's organ, Rhodes, clav, or whatever it is, and guitar. Uh, what I find to be interesting in these scenarios is if I'm comping and the bass player or uh, the keyboard player, whoever it is that's taking a solo, you have to decide where you're going to be based on who's soloing and what frequencies they're. Uh, if they're higher, if like the bass player is higher up on the neck, or if the keyboard player's player is playing high up on. Um, you know, in the upper register of the keyboard, uh, you don't want to be competing for that space. So if a keyboard player is, you know, playing an organ and has that ringing out while they're soloing, right? I don't want to be up here competing with that note. I want to stay, and I'm only playing two notes there. I'm just playing B and D. But the, the G tonal center is assumed within that context. So. So when you're playing with other people, you don't have to worry about all just playing a bar chord the whole time. That's not necessarily needed, you know, in, in moments like that. Um, if you're playing a 12 bar, you know, sometimes if you're playing the rhythm part, we all kind of like are used to doing that. And if you're not, it's basically the start of a power chord, and you're adding a six. like that, you know, that's a little bit more necessary because of the genre and because of the style that you're playing. Um, but outside of that, if you're playing in any groups where you're going to be taking some improvisational risks 
or um, you know everybody's kind of taking a turn blowing over the changes, whatever it might be, whether it's a static groove or it's changes, you really need to think about how can I make more space for the soloist, is basically what I'm saying. Um, and in the context of playing a song, um, you know, if you're playing a tune that goes from the one to the four, like G to C, like that's much more tasteful to me than. leaving space to be filled in by the other members of the band like we don't want to always be walking on each other anytime you see a group and it's something sounds off like there's too much going on it's too busy too many notes whatever it's that everyone basically you can you could probably chalk it up to like they're not all listening to each other so that's just like another part of the the Zen band member is just understanding your sonic space and listening to everybody. Where is everyone? What's the bass player doing? You know, and then lean over towards the keyboard player. What's the keyboard player doing? What are the drums doing? Is he playing just like a pocket groove? Is he playing a lot of notes? Because at that time, maybe you need to pull it back. Um, it's really being, you know, conscious of all that stuff while you're inside of the song. So let's just talk about, so that, that um, one more thing. So there's our, you know, root triad. And then we know our first inversion would be playing B, D, and G. So we're just barring our first finger over the uh, second and first string on the third fret. Right, so there's the. Right. So what I would want you to do and kind of explore is there's other notes and other tensions that you can add in amongst the triad. So if I'm playing this, uh, just B, D, G, try it, first inversion of a G major chord, and I want to make a dominant 7, then you add that F on the second string. So we're going to be replacing the D here with the F on the sixth fret. I use this all the time. So for super funky stuff, Stupid, tried, and true. Um, I should make shirts that say that. Simple, stupid, tried, and true. Um, there is nothing wrong with that. Listen to like a lot of the roots where I get these things from would be like Motown, or like check out you know a lot of old old stack stuff, Otis Redding stuff. Listen to the guitar players that are playing in that. Those are usually large bands. Those are bands with you know maybe two guitar players, a bass player, drummer, uh, keyboard player, horns. So that's a big band. So you got to understand what you're doing. Um, paying attention to uh, you know what uh, voicings you're using that aren't competing or stepping on anything else that the horns or the keyboard player is doing. So this is where this stuff comes from, you know, as far as you know where I'm pulling this from. But you know that seven, that dominant seven chord shape is perfect. You can add in that six. and whatnot. I'm just basically walking up like a G major scale. And we can do that in another lesson, but that would be like doing almost like a quarter scale. You can practice doing that just up to the 12th fret. So you're playing your... The only two voicings you're gonna have to do are that first inversion voice with your middle finger and your first finger. So... And then bar. 7th fret, and then we're going to play 
play a C first inversion, so we're going to start on the E, G, C, and then D would be F sharp, A, D, and then E minor would be G, B, E. forget all of these triads and you know we're preaching these like crazy but like they're the foundation and the, the bedrock of any good guitar players understanding your triads and inversions and and where to move them and how to add tensions like your your you know, dominant seven uh, major seven um, nines nine would be something like that. that Hendrix thing. The stuff that he did all the time. Always with that sus thing. And adding that six. So super important guys. Um, just a really quick approach to maybe exploring your neck a little bit more and changing this. Do it in different keys. Start in the key of A, do it in the key of F. Same thing with those uh, chord scale. Do that as an exercise. Then move to F. About A. So you can understand it's an A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major. Recognize that from something like uh, Lean on Me, like. Right? So, triads, triads, triads. They're all over popular music. Pay attention to them, embrace them, learn them all over your neck, and then you'll be rocking and rolling before you know it. Thanks, guys. See you later.